last where you left off. You got to the haunted mansion, it turned out it wasn't haunted, it was just the base of a smuggler operation. So you tripped your way onto the ship, you discovered underneath the, the inside of a bunch of barrels that have been stowing away just weapons in general. There was a ship battle going on between the pirates and Saltmarsh. Two Finchmerts and Throgmorton decided to betray the captain of this ship. They came to board you, and that's where we pick up now. Kevin, you decided to stay asleep throughout the entire battle as you feel a violent shove against the ship and you fall out of your hammock. I'll look to see what's going on. Coming out of the door, just as you see a bunch of these pirates jumping over onto your ship, Ethan Schmertz takes out the fairy fire innator and that was it. across. The innator explodes in Schmertz's hands and he's just blasted off his feet and falls unconscious. And as they jump through the fire, they all glow a violet colour. As they land on the other side of the ship, you will all get advantage on them because you can see them. I wish to stab the one nearest to me with uh, both my daggers, please. Uh, 24 with a natural 20 that on advantage. Uh, my damage is 6. As it's mid-air, you take out your daggers and you just slash upwards. It kind of comes over you. You just leave your daggers dug into them and it just scrapes down his side and just cuts him inside. You feel like it's just fly across your head as he lands on the other side of you. Or you, you're just splattered with a bunch of blood across your face. I'm going to hit him with my mate and then punch him. So it's a 14 to hit with the mace and then unnatural 20 with my punch. 12 damage in total. So as he dives over as well, covered in the fairy fire, and with the mace you're ready, you just bash him on the head and then just punch him. And you just see as his, his eyes go cross-eyed as he falls backwards over the side of the ship. Can I drop another sword on the captain's head? You roll the eight. Six. So as you drop a long sword out of the bag of holding again, you're still flying above him with your tiny wings trying to keep you afloat. So then it comes down and just slashes into his coat. He's got just a small gash against his shoulder as then he looks up at you. I guess I'm quite confused about what's happening, but I should probably <laughs> assist my colleagues. I think I'll take out my longbow. I'll shoot the salt mafia. 16. So uh, man, please roll your damage. It's five. Apathy, just as you finished like slashing across, you just see the door open. Kevin stepping out looking completely confused, instinctively gets out his bow and shoots this salt marsh crewmate. He gets shot in his leg and he kind of stumbles to the ground just on one knee, screaming, looking directly at Kevin. It's this one seeing his friends just fall. He's going to call to his captain for help. The captain can begin making way over. He takes out a gun and points it towards Apathy. 14 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Okay, only two points of damage. You hit all here just the sound of, you know, crack, a device you've never seen used before. As Apathy, you're shot in the side and you see a cloud of smoke coming from his direction. As this pirate now is going to take a firstly slash at Apathy and then another slash at this guy next to him. Unnatural 20 to hit you. Yeah. And then a two to hit the pirate. So with a slash across you again, sorry, you're going to take six points of slashing damage as he tries then to attack the next one, but this pirate just parries it. This drunk guy, he's going to stumble backwards and just watch because he thinks it's kind of under control. This captain is now going to cast fireballs at you, Brock Martin. 20 to hit, two points of fire damage as this blast of fire comes bursting out of his hand and kind of blasts up at you. These two pirates here slash into this guy who's here and he is killed. So the only guy who seems to be a threat at this stage is this captain up here. I want to stab him with my daggers, please. So 18 to hit, 7 to hit with the second. Okay, so the first one definitely hits. In that case, the damage is 3. So you jump up there and with one dagger, you slash him and he kind of carries it slightly with his own scimitar, but too distracted by the gun in his hand. You kind of catch him on his arm. Right, I'm going to have to go with my great yeah. club. Uh, 18. Please roll your damage. 5. Oh, you jumps up with the great club, taking off your back. You hammer down on him. 
still dodging after his attack with the second dagger has this great club bashed into his side and he falls against this chain just here you see his gun drop to the ground so he can no longer make ranged attacks I'm gonna enter my starry form as an archer so first attack 17 to hit 5 damage the next one 18 to hit with 12 damage. Brock Morton, as he's flying in the sky, he begins to transform into weird glittering stars and constellations. Constellation like arrows just come flying out of it and piercing him. And he seems to go through him almost, but then you see inky like blackness come out of him as they hit him. I'm gonna definitely ignore that. I should shoot the captain. 21. 21 will hit, please roll your damage. Five. Kevin, seeing the starry form and ignoring it, Longbow again, as he's reaching down to a strike apathy, he gets an arrow into his hand even, and you see it sticking out as it kind of breaks off and falls to the floor, as he then is going to chop once at OU and again at apathy. OU, that is 18 to hit, mm-hmm. and apathy 14. Yeah. Uh, apathy, that's six points of damage, and... Oh, I'm dead. And you fall backwards, landing with a horrible sounding splintering thud on this deck of this ship here. As are you, he gets you again as well in your side. I'm going to use my stone's endurance. To reduce it, I think. By 1d12 plus 2. 9. <laughs> Wax you with the scimitar and it just doesn't even go through your skin, just as your reaction is already immediate. He's looking at you with confusion, so you just smile at him very dazedly. This pirate captain over here, he's going to try and fire a ray of frost this time. That is 18 plus. Five. From his hands, he's able to bicycle form and then he up at you. Eight points of frost damage. As you see, all the stars around just freeze in, in the space. These two pirates are not going to jump up as well and try and attack, but they don't seem very confident in doing so because this guy is clearly a threat. And as this guy's parrying all the attacks, one lucky one gets through and he's going to take from that six points of damage. So, Apathy, as you land on the deck, it feels like the whole deck swallows you into darkness and all your wounds just suddenly seem to fade to nothing and you feel no pain as you land in just a cloud of dust and as you're looking around it seems like you're in a burning place but the fires and do nothing to harm you and as you look up you just see one very bright figure approaching you very slowly please make a death saving throw 12 healing word for five and so this vision in front of you you just begin to hear faint buzzing and you see some tiny bee wings behind the celestial form of Oyu <laughs> as the spell cures you and you wake up to see Oyu looking down upon you, smiling as you are healed for five hit points. Smile back and say thank you. Throck Martin, you hear the sound of buzzing from below. Part of your stars are frozen. You're looking down at this pirate captain. What would you like to do? Same thing. A natural 20 to hit with our oh, six damage. Okay, and then the next one is 22 and... 16. The previous one was just like a small you know, pebble that you chucked at him, but this time it's like a spear the size of the bullister that you've been firing earlier. It, all the stars that you've been frozen kind of reformed hit this as it just shoots down into him, and this time it just spears him into the deck itself. You see wood just flinch up as well as the force of it strikes him as he roars in anger. He is going to try and cast... Magic missile, three ones. I roll 3d4 and it's three ones. Three missiles come shooting out of his hands, blocking parts of these stars against you. Uh, all of them hit, you just take three points of damage as just stars go scattering across the sky. Is this so much captain still alive? Yeah. I'll shoot him again. 22. <laughs> 22 hits. Everyone's hitting tonight, it's great. Damage four. So with a fire from the longbow, kind of tries to parry it again after parrying the previous two attacks, but then again, you strike him with the second arrow and he's looking a bit exhausted at this point. He looks at you, takes a couple of steps backwards, drops the scimitar, begins to raise his hands quite slowly. Now just just hold on a minute. No. Shoot him again. I stab him with my daggers. Uh, 11 to hit. You stab forward the one, he just dodges to one side, and you stab forward again. He's gonna just try and knock it out of your hand a bit, but he's just trying to get out of your way. Just hold on, hear me out. I'm following what apathy did. Attack with my mace and I'm trying to punch him. So that's 19 to hit with one and 12 with the other. 12 does not. Five damage. With a mace, you just whack into him. He's taking offense at this now. He's like, hold on, I'm trying to be reasonable with you. You try and punch him, he just kind of looks to one side. I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself, and then as a bonus action, I'm going to use that Archer spell again. Eight to heal. You see a cloud just form around them as some spell is cast. (laughs) Natural 20 again. Okay. Uh, So 11. With a bunch of force, these stars begin forming again, and just one arrow solitary comes flying down. All you, the rest of you see is just the pirate's hat just come floating down to the deck and just land on this grill, you know, great thing here. As Throckmartin, 
you spear him through the neck and then his he's, he's body just begins filling with this black liquid as he begins choking on it and falls down as this spell takes him. Kevin, would you like to still shoot the salt marsh guy? Yes. Uh, 16. 16 hits, yes. Five damage. So as he ducks to one side to try and dodge or use punch, he gets an arrow in the shoulder and he falls backwards. Now again, against this chain here, he's then just going to beg, please, I can speak your language. And he opens over from his coat a bag of gold. This now and so much more will give you a position on our ship. And he just throws the bag of gold at our used feet. You've damaged the hull and everything. We don't want your ship. Uh, so he's looking around, he's like, are you with them or are you attacking them? He looks at Throckmorton, who's now, you know, still shimmering in the sky. I just didn't like him. Well, look, if you didn't like the guy, we've been hunting this guy for a while, so uh, whatever he was paying you, we'll give you triple. It's all yours if you want, if you want his bounty too. Just... He was being mean to his pirates, so I killed him. He wasn't paying him anything, so triple nothing is still nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could just lie and tell him that we're being paid like a thousand gold a day. We could kill him and take all his gold. Yeah, stabbing him. 15 to hit. And the damage is 6. Jumping over, you hit the slash, and he hits part of his belt and just you know, tears it up a bit. He's just like, just please hit me out. I keep backing up Apathy. So 14 to hit with my mace, 7 damage. He almost falls unconscious. He's very dazed as you get this mace and you whack it against him. You've just pinned him now with all the force you've got against this chain and he falls backwards over it. His back seems to be bent very awkwardly. He's just breathing very heavily. Can I walk over it and then throw him overboard? Okay, please roll a strength check. 11. So, five. So you grab him and you begin pulling him overboard, clutching his side, he's about to die. And you see him begin floating on the surface, face down, and you see a pool of blood as the waves begin taking him away. I tell the pirates, you are all now legally obligated to serve Miss Apathy. Please roll a persuasion <laughs> check. I want to say with disadvantage after failing that very. <laughs> Eight. You fool these guys straight away. Okay, which one's apathy? Uh, I point to the demon. They look at you and take a few steps back. One of them tr- like, <laughs> tries to bow on one knee and doesn't know if it's regulation or not. So he's like, uh, and then just stumbles back to his feet. Captain, as then the drunk guy begins making his way over, just staggering. He kind of just falls against this boat here. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Can I put a hand on his shoulder and say, I think we should get a drink. Okay, please roll persuasion check with advantage. That's a nine and a 12. 12 is literally just enough. You need a 12. You know what? That sounds like a really fine idea. He puts his arm around your shoulder and just begins walking away, not caring at all about his dead captain. The other captain's bag of gold is just on the floor. Take the gold. You just scoop up the sack of gold and you now have 250 gold pieces. Is the body floating on the water of the pirate captain? It is. It's beginning to float away. You've been doing this about two minutes now. Can I quickly fly over to him and check if he has any keys on him? Roll an investigation check. I also enter my dragon form, so I can't roll lower than 10. Unnatural 20. So as you fly over to him, begin investigating him, pulling him out of the water, but he's still gasping for breath, and as you turn him over, he just coughs up loads of water. You begin searching his pockets and stuff. You don't find any keys, but you do find a bunch of papers, which seems to be some kind of contract. So who's the captain now? Technically, you're the captain, according to Throgmorton. Can I go and steal the old captain's hat? It stinks as you pick it up. He clearly didn't wash it very much. Uh, you brush off a bit of the dust and a bit of the blood that's on there. You just rub it off and then put it on your head. Does he have a weapon of any kind that I can steal? The only thing he had was the scimitar. I'll take it. Cool. Cool. Can I install or you as my first mate? Is that the first mate? I can't believe it. I don't entirely understand what's just happened. So that's, that's my reaction. I slowly okay. and carefully explain it to him. Make a wisdom check. I'd say intelligence, because she's trying to explain the rules of what's happening. I rolled a two, but then my minus one takes it down to one. (laughs) I think that just means that I'm her best friend. (laughs) Be in charge, you next in charge. (laughs) And then I feel sad that I'm the first friend you've ever had. (laughs) I order you to uh, set these men to work. I very quickly park an order. Find brooms, sweep up. One of them looks apathy for confirmation that this is right. Just do what you normally do. 
as then they go back <laughs> down into the hammock place and you play cards again, I guess. The other ship is an explored. You don't really know what's on there. Can I enter? You can land back on it because you're kind of flying around right now. As you go into the, the crew place, you realise that below the deck is mainly just quarters for the captain himself and a few stowaways, I guess. So it's not really for long travel. It's just for short distances. Can I check any any kind of possessions? On the desk are a bunch of papers. You do find a key now. Uh, it's actually a set of keys, so the three keys on the little keychain. You know, that little anchor figure uh, the keychain. Is there anything the key can fit into, the keys? You can have an investigation check around the room. 14. You have a quick look around the room. There's nothing that can be unlocked here, so it must be something in Salt Marsh that the keys belong to. One of them definitely looks like a house key in terms of its thickness. The other two could be like wardrobes or chests. I go up on deck and I go to Apathy and I'm like, we have a house now. Yeah. Uh, in Salt Marsh. Good job. Also, Sorry. thank you for making me captain. That, that You're was, welcome. That was pretty cool of you. I'll give you a, a crisp high five. Maybe we should go back and say, oh, so we were held hostage by pirates. And then Saltmarsh came and tried to rescue us, but then... Wait, what kind of treasure were they expecting? I take out the golden skull out of the bag of holding. I can just bring back this. Or the captain's head, that works too. Or both. We could turn the captain's head into a golden skull. Kevin, eat the head. Yes. (laughs) You have attuned to the stone now. As you slept You're on gonna it. You're going to start pooping golden nuggets. I'm going to read out because I think this is a cruel trick of the book. But I wanted to do it anyway because it's kind of necessary. Do nothing to prevent the characters from being misled regarding the stone that carried by the alchemist in Area 23, as well as the book and the golden objects found in his lab. In truth, there is no such thing as a philosopher's stone, though your players mm-hmm. may put two and two together and decide otherwise. They will become excited at the idea of possessing one. <laughs> Of course, once a character attunes to the stone, the sad truth is revealed. You've just eaten a rock. No, no. (laughs) It's even worse. You have attuned a cursed luck stone. So you cannot discard the stone. It's always on your person. And it will immediately teleport back to your pocket or basically part of your body. You can't get it out of you will let you gain an advantage on one ability check per long rest. After you use the stone's magic, your next two ability checks are made with a disadvantage. So if you okay, so it's it, just basically useless. So it's basically useless. Either. So sadly, you do not have a philosopher's stone inside you. The alchemist was just trying to sell the stone as one, try and make some money, and it clearly didn't work. So we take the captain's head, and we take the skull, and we go back to Salt Marsh, and we say we were held hostage by pirates, and then Salt Marsh tried to rescue us, but then the pirates killed Salt Martians. And how then you, how you... we killed our captain. We managed to break out and we killed the captain. Mm-hmm. To be fair, we've got two ships now. We've got a tax off. We don't have enough people. Yeah, true. <laughs> we've <laughs> got two followers and a drunk. We've also got Derek. Do we still have Derek? <laughs> Love Derek. Oh, and he thinks he's your best friend? Oh, Even though I try to kill him many times. <laughs> I say we just go with Throckmorton's plan. Which ship are we taking? Are we taking both? The just other one's ours. just too damaged. Yeah. We We'd should have to burn. repair it. We should burn that one. How far are we from something? About four hours away. <laughs> we might as well just go back then. Okay. The sooner we get back, the sooner we can get going. Yeah. Who is taking control of navigating the ship and moving it around? And um, I have a starry map from... Oh, I've got yeah. that almanac thing. <laughs> you do have the almanac. That's like tides, times from past... We can dual navigate. So as you begin trying to turn the ship around, these two pirates that you've kind of taken on are like, uh, the sails will need to be raised if you want to turn. I say, raise the sails! As I, mean, I give him a thumbs up. Okay, as the two of them are like, oh, you, and they point to Kevin. He's like, just, can you help? Just just pull this, and they point towards the rope. No, I'm uh, going for a nap. <laughs> you push through and find the drunk passed out on a hammock, and also Trent is in the... Eric. Passed out on the second hammock, as you, you make your way and have another nap. Eventually, these two pirates managed to figure out themselves and get the weight needed to pull it. They shout to all you for help as well. I can try. So they chuck you a rope, just you know, they need the strength to do it. I hold the rope. And then just just pull it. Just just walk over the shoulder, tug. Oh, okay, I'm going to pull it as hard <laughs> as I can. Please make a strength check to see how bad this is. 22. <laughs> <laughs> so they're already holding onto this rope, and as you just tug, you just drag them off the feet, slide down across the deck, and look up at you. One just gives a thumbs up. A couple of hours into the journey, um, it is getting pretty cold. You're beginning to see in the final of the sunrise. A lot of you are tired for not sleeping. Kevin, to the room next to you, you hear the soft sound of conspiring whispers in almost hisses. Can I listen in? Please, can I just have a perception check to see how much you can hear? Sneaky, sneaky. 15. 
They are speaking a completely different language. I speak all the languages. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tr- I'm going to try and play cards with them. I've got a playing card set. <laughs> so as you, you enter this room, the smell of like a swamp instantly hits you. As your eyes adjust to the darkness of this room as well, you see three slimy looking figures, which are lizard folk, who are sitting around the table and all look at you as you enter. On the table is just a jug, something with red liquid in it. You're not sure what they're drinking. They also have like a hooded lantern on the ceiling, which is really dimly lighted with really grimy windows. It's just lighting this place very slightly. And you also see a small figure in the shadows up in the corner. You can see that it's a very, very small pseudo dragon and one just hisses something at you in Draconic. Can I cast Animal Friendship? So Wisdom plus one. Fifteen altogether. So as you cast this spell, uh, the lizard folks see you reading some kind of magic, and as the spell hits the pseudo-dragon, his eyes widen and he kind of looks at you curiously for a moment, and then also hisses at you, and climbs up further up into the deck. Let's play cards. Go fish, rules. <laughs> fish. And then he kind of just shrugs at you. One of his friends, the shorter looking of the three, goes, uh, steaks? Like, like me? Rummages around in his leather armor and pulls out a small sack of gold and just jingles it in front of your face and goes, How oh, many steaks? We've got 20 gold pieces. Two of them step back, leave the table straight away. And then the, the tallest looking one that grins at you, pulls out a really large sack of gold, puts it on the table and begins counting out 20 gold pieces and then winks at you. I'm going to do the same rules as it was last time. So D8, D6 and D4 and then just the total. Okay. I've got 10. So as you begin playing cards, dealing them out, the guy is looking very smug as he reveals his hand. He got dealt the higher hand of 12. And so he rakes in your 20 gold pieces and with a hiss of delight, his friends begin cheering him, clapping on his back, and looking very proud of themselves. How far away from Salt Marsh are we? It's about half an hour at this stage. Can I use about 20 minutes to go and investigate the person that I was sent here to investigate? Please roll an investigation check. 19. Okay, I will give you some details a bit later on. So the mist is beginning to clear on the morning and you're able to see the city very clearly now. The ship is met with confusion at first and then as you begin to you know, drop anchor, you see a commotion on the docks as people recognize the ship for being you know, obviously a smuggler's ship and one that's very damaged right now. Do we have any kind of way of signaling them that it was the ones that got sent out to the place? Very few people would have known about this. Do before. we have a big white flag? You can definitely make one. <laughs> can I make a big white flag? So in the ship, you find a stash for the ship's supplies, <laughs> extra sails and stuff. So you can definitely make a large white flag out of the old sails. I do that. So you spend about 10 minutes doing that as you drop the anchor and people are beginning to approach and you make a giant white flag and you begin waving that. A small rowboat sets out to meet you. Someone on there with uh, very elegant robes and asks to board. I I say yes. Welcome to the... People who have a contract with you have captured a pirate ship. Ship. (laughs) I say that. Met with confusion again by this thick bearded guy and his companion of some kind. I can't say a dwarf, which is a dwarf. A dwarf. It's all right, Kevin's downstairs. <laughs> As you lower the ladders down, they begin climbing onto the deck. Okay, we know this ship by reputation. We, we need to speak to Sand Ballot. Why? Sand Ballot is one of our more wanted smugglers. We kind of have the uh, head out for him. I uh, uh, hold out his head. head. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've got his head. Very morbidly picks up Sand Ballot's head. The dwarf grins with glee. I point to uh, Throckmorton. We need to start a new contract with this guy. It turns back towards Apathy, so I'm guessing you are the, the captain, looking at the hat in your head. I guess so. So um, now. Uh, we have a contract with Craddock Stonehorn. I pull out the contract. Comes up to you, looks at the thing, sees his signature, and he's like, oh, the, the, the old haunted house. Uh, okay, let's... Uh, it looks up at the sky where it's all misty and cold. A bit more comfortable to have a, a quick conversation. Go to the captain's quarters. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. You go through to the captain's quarters. Um, is anyone else following? Me. And so you pull up a chair and this guy is the massive bearded guy. And he's just like, okay, so we, we have a thing against, you know, execution in the town. Bad on morale, especially with the, the various factions going on. Clearly what Craddock had in mind was uh, for you to go up there and to be killed. Clearly you've succeeded in something. 
the crimes are now considered paid in full, as long as you hand over the cargo that had been stolen. Yeah, we'll do that. We could also clearly make some arrangement with you for the ship. We'll just have to definitely rename it and change some of the sails. You can go speak to the guy at the dry dock for fixing up with some new sails and a new branding. Okay, yeah, just give it a paint job, get some new sails, that kind of thing. Our gratitude extends to, say, 500 gold pieces towards your repairs with the ship and the rebrand and we can give you some more work should you want it from us. We'll have to confer about that I think. Well welcome back to the city of Saltmarsh. It's great to see you alive and I'm glad Sam Bellet's finally dead. Um, the rest of his crew what are we doing with them? Are we? I want the drunk alive. The first mate? Yeah. Mate. Were they aware that it was all just a smuggling thing that it, this place wasn't actually haunted and that there was no treasure? You'll have to explain that to them because they believe it's haunted stuff. Okay I explained that to them. Well if that's what you're saying if you want that house as your own it's been long abandoned. You know, yeah. Yes. Definitely. Just as a heads up, it will cost a few thousand to renovate it back to its original glory. Maybe that can be our payment for whatever work they have for us. Then we can like turn it into like a bigger hotel and then like earn money from that without having to do anything. Yeah. We can give like ghost tours. Sure. Like to start getting money, we can give ghost tours. Yeah, I can be the little demon in the corner that scares people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're having a conversation, these two leave the room. Okay, we'll leave you to your plans. We're just going to head back, explain the situation, and then you're free to dock. The news is spreading that there, there are some new heroes in Saltmarsh. Uh, I think that's where we're going to finish for this week. 